Good morning. Today we'll be doing a mini experiment. And the question we'll be answering is this. What happens to the mass as registered by a scale when the scale is placed on a ramp? So notice we are measuring the mass of a tuning fork. Originally, the mass of the tuning fork is 40.76 grams. This is when the scale is placed on a flat surface. And here are your three choices. When we take the exact same tuning fork and place the balance on a ramp, will the mass, as registered by the scale, increase, no change in the mass, or decreases? Please select an answer now. Okay, I hope you've selected an answer. Here it is. Notice that the scale now records 39.70 grams. Originally it was well over 40 grams. So notice that the mass has decreased by over one gram. And so the question is why does that happen? Well, we'll be answering that question at the very end of this video. However, we're going to start off by recording some data. I'm going to ask you to record the following two pieces of data. Angle of the inclination of the ramp and the mass as recorded by the scale. Now once you get the angle, I'm going to ask you to compute or calculate 40.76 times the cosine of the angle. So we'll measure the angle with a protractor as you can see in the diagram. The mass, of course, will be measured with the digital balance. And we're going to take the original mass, which is 40.76, we'll never change that number, and multiply it by a cosine of the angle that we measure with the protractor. And we'll see what happens. So here's our first data point. The angle is two and a half degrees. Clearly you can see the 10 degree mark here. This would be the five degree mark, four, three, and it's somewhere between two and three. So we'll call that two and a half degrees. There's the mass, 40.73 grams. It's decreased slightly, hasn't it? And so here's our first row of data. Two and a half degrees for the angle, 40.73 grams as measured by the scale. And we're going to do 40.76 times cosine of two and a half. That's 40.72. Hmm. Please note, although I showed you the equation in the table, never write the equation in the table. Write all equations below the table. Within the table, all I ever want to see are just numbers, as you can see here. Notice that the mass, as recorded by a scale, and that formula are giving you almost identical answers. Interesting. And so the question is why does that calculation give you the same answer as the mass recorded by the scale? That's the question we'll be looking at today. All right, here's our next data point. It's around four and a half degrees, as you can see, between the four and the five and the mass continues to decrease, 40.63 grams. Here's your next data point. You estimate what the angle is. There's the mass. Next data point, please write down the angle that you think it is. Clearly now the angle is above 10 degrees. Please record the angle. Our next data point, somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees. Please record the value for the mass. Now our angle is above 15 degrees. Please record the mass. And finally, our angle is somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees. Please record the mass. Now, what I want you to do is compare that column in the table to this column in the table. And you'll notice that these two columns are virtually identical. 
And so the question is, where does this formula of 40.76 times the cosine of the angle come from? Well, it comes from physics. And this goes to show you the power of physics. That you can write an equation down and then use it to predict an outcome. And so, for example, we could substitute the angle 25 degrees into that formula and use it to predict the mass as recorded by the scale if we were to do that experiment. That's the power of physics, that we can write equations to predict outcomes. So now I'm going to show you how we get that formula. First question we have to ask is, what force does a scale measure? A scale measures the normal force. And here's the normal force drawn. In mathematics, normal means perpendicular. It's drawn perpendicular to the surface at a 90 degree angle with respect to the surface. To determine the normal force, all we have to do is take the mass as registered by the scale and multiply by 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity. In addition, we have another force acting on the tuning fork. In this case, it's the force of gravity. Now what we're going to do is draw the component of the force of gravity that is parallel to the normal force. I zoomed in on this diagram to make things a little bit more clear. The angle, as measured by the protractor, is located where my arrow is pointing. Now notice that the acceleration of the tuning fork is zero. Well, if it's zero, that means that the normal force is equal to the component of the force of gravity. So the two vectors that I've circled, those forces are equal to each other. How do we know that? Well, we know that the tuning fork isn't moving. So if the tuning fork isn't moving, that means that forces have to be equal to each other. Please note, there should also be a force of friction drawn in this diagram. That force of friction prevents the tuning fork from sliding off the balance. However, we will not be focusing on the force of friction because it's not a part of this analysis. Now, the component of the force of gravity is equal to the force of gravity times cosine of the angle. Why is that? Well, recall some trigonometry. Cosine of any angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is the component of the force of gravity. This vector here is the adjacent. The hypotenuse is this vector here. That's the hypotenuse to the triangle. This is the adjacent side. And so rearranging this equation, we come up with the component of the force of gravity is equal to Fg, hypotenuse, times cosine of the angle. And so we have one expression for the normal force. Normal force equals the force of gravity, or the weight, multiplied by the cosine of the angle. But a few moments ago, we had another expression for the normal force. It was whatever the scale registers, scale mass, multiplied by 9.8. And so what we can do is equate those two expressions for the normal force. And we'll write down that equation here. The weight times cosine of the angle is equal to the scale mass times 9.8. And now we'll substitute. Force of gravity, or the weight, is mass times 9.8. Notice the 9.8s cancel. And we're left with mass times cosine of the angle, that's measured with the protractor, equals the scale mass. Or we're left with the equation I gave to you at the beginning of the video. The mass was 40.76 times cosine of the angle equals the scale mass. So you notice throughout this investigation that the mass as registered by a scale decreased as the angle of inclination increased. Now this has real world applications in terms of driving. Whether you're traveling down a hill or you're traveling up a hill, normal force always acts on you. And as you just saw in the experiment, 
the normal force decreased while you're on a ramp. In other words, while your car is on a hill, the normal force decreases. So what's the implication of that? Well, we know that friction is proportional to normal force. So what does this mean? It means that on a hill, whether you're going up a hill or down a hill, it doesn't matter which way you're going. You're going to have less friction or less grip. And you saw that today with the experiment. With the experiment, the mass decreased. That means there's less normal force, and less normal force means less friction, less grip. When does this matter? Well, specifically it matters for winter driving. When the conditions are already icy, if you're going down a hill or going up a hill, you're going to have less grip, less friction. All because you have less normal force. I hope you enjoyed today's activity. Have a great day. Bye-bye.